Hello homeowners, today we're going to talk about your electrical panel and some of you may have a problem in that all of the slots are filled for the breakers and you need to potentially add another breaker. You want to run another line for something else. You may have an old panel that it's small and only has room for what it has now. You want to expand but you don't want to get a whole new electrical panel just to free up space to add another breaker. Now, you know, that could be a challenge, but it can be solved pretty easily. There's a couple of choices here, and you could potentially do it yourself if you're comfortable working around the panel. I want to show you right at the workbench uh, a couple of examples of what you can do, and then also show you a real live example of what I had happening in my sub panel in the basement. Let's get to the workbench. Well, before we hit the workbench, you can see my panel is, was upgraded a few years ago. 200 amp panel and I've got all of this space for additional lines and breakers which I will be utilizing because I've got a uh, upcoming video about adding a, um, an outlet into your garage for additional things. More to come on that but your panel might not look like this. Your panel may only have stop here and this is what we're going to get into. So here we have a regular breaker and here's the size of it. It looks like it's about you know about an inch in width, okay? Takes up about an inch in your panel. Now, what we can do is we can get, we've got two choices here to reduce the space or to improve the space so you can add more breakers. We can, what we can do is we could add these slimline breakers. They get sold individually, okay? So this has the same capability as this one, okay? This is a 20 amp breaker and this is a 20 amp breaker. All right, it's just smaller, it's slimmer. Now what you can do is you can fit two 20s or a 20 and a 15. They don't have to be the same. And when you look, they take about the same amount of space. But if your panel is able to accept these, you can uh, take out an existing 20 that you might want to make room for something else, pull this out, and you can put two 20s in or a 20 and a 15, for example. And then you've, you, now you've got, you take the wire out of this one, put it into here, and now you've got this other breaker for whatever it is that you need. These are slim lines. I like these. Now here's another one. This is a tandem, but this is a single pole tandem, meaning that you can operate them individually. And they're for 120, okay? They're not together. Now a tandem double pole, these two would be connected. You'd be flipping them together like this. They'll be operating the same circuit. And in that situation, it's more of a, a 220 line, for example, where you'll have your, your black wire and your white wire. And you're, that way you're gonna be powering with more power to whatever device you have on the other end. Could be, you know, maybe a water heater, which probably uses more than, you know, let's say it's a 30 amp or 40 amp water heater, whatever you've got and then you've got your ground wire. So your, your hot and your neutral will be wired to, the, to that uh, tandem that's a double pole where they, when they move together at the same time. But, but this is a single pole, so this is another way you can do this. Now if you, know, if you knew that you were going to be running, for example, in this situation, two 15s, then you can just get this tandem single pole breaker and each circuit would have its own screw here. Okay, you could, you could tie it in here individually. Now, the, one of the differences is that because this is all contained into one breaker, you've got potentially a lot of power, and this thing will get a little warmer, a little hotter than these two that are individual with just a little space in between them. Okay, so these will run a little cooler than this one, and otherwise, they will accomplish the same thing. Now, let's get you downstairs to my uh, sub panel in the basement and I can show you how I put these things into use. All right, so now we got a little bit of light on this sub panel here. And um, you can see where I added a couple of slims here to make some room and also a couple here. So I, what, it, what we were doing here was we were uh, running dedicated lines to the uh, two bathrooms because you know this is old construction and they had bathrooms tied in with everything else. And as we were using things like hair dryers and all that, we were 
it was getting too hot and dangerous and tripping breakers. So, so I ran dedicated lines from here to the bathroom because this sub panel was much closer to the bathrooms than the panel in the garage that you just saw. The only problem is, is look how small this little sub panel is. <laughs> we didn't have any room. So I had to take out two breakers and replace them with four slims. So that way I can get the two additional lines in to run to the bathrooms. So here's a real example of, of what I was talking about. All right, now these things are not super expensive. They're roughly the same cost as a regular breaker. Uh, and you can do this yourself if you're comfortable working around the electrical panel. If you're not comfortable, then don't do it yourself. Hire an electrician or maybe you have a friend that's really handy and has worked in the electrical panel before and you trust that person. It'll save you a lot of money. This will only cost you a few dollars. But remember, if you are running a new line, you likely need a permit in your town anyway to run the new uh, line from the panel to whatever it is that you're doing, okay? So check your local code with that. You can do that yourself if you're comfortable. You don't need an electrician just because you're getting a permit to do something like that. You just need to make sure you have it inspected. Uh, if you're running a wire, you'll have to do the rough inspection, which means they just see the wire, you know, open wall. And then, um, and then after the fact, you might need to get it inspected again for the finish, meaning the breaker's in and the receptacle on the other side is in too. So hopefully that explains uh, the install process. But if you do have any questions about these, uh, leave your questions in the comments. I will reply. Again, this is not difficult. You can do it yourself. And this is the way to go if you're trying to free up a few spaces on your panel. I appreciate you watching. If this was helpful, please hit that like button. And we will see you again on the very next video.